Hello, I'm Peter Carter. This is a video for the Climate Emergency Institute. It's September 2021. This is a brief version of a long video that I just did recently. And the title is, How Fast Is the Climate Being Changed? Could climate change today be tracking the worst case scenario? So the study is a comprehensive study of global climate change indicators and that is, they are the direct causes and direct effects of atmospheric greenhouse gas pollution caused by greenhouse gas emissions. This is the list of global climate change indicators and the summary of the finding is that these climate change indicators are at record, that is adverse highs, they are all increasing faster than ever and they are on the worst case scenario. So a very important report was published by the World Meteorological Organization, the WMO, in September of 2019, and this was five years of global climate change. And the headline for this report was Global Climate in 2015 to 2019, Climate Change Accelerates. Here are two images from that report, the global surface temperature increase obviously accelerating, and there the map of the global surface temperature increase with the regional increases. The focus on this video is the worst case scenario and it is the worst case RCP 8.5 scenario. That's what this worst case is called and these are RCP scenarios. They're global radiative heat forcing going from best case projection to worst case projection. The diagram that you see in front of you is the global climate change indicator of global warming, global average surface temperature increase. I've chosen this one because it shows both degrees C and degrees F, and it is from pre-industrial. This one is the one we're interested in. That's RCP 8.5, the worst case, and that heats up uh, fastest and more than any of the other scenarios. And the uh, one at the bottom here is the best case scenario which is called RCP 2.6. First a paper published in 2020, we have this uh, cumulative CO2 emissions and the title of the paper, RCP 8.5 tracks cumulative CO2 emissions. And the abstract said not only are the emissions consistent with the RCP 8.5, RCP 8.5, the very worst case scenario, is also the best match out to mid-century under current and stated policies. And this shows the accelerating cumulative CO2 emissions, that's cumulative fossil fuel CO2 emissions, and that is the latest update of August 2021 from the Scripps Institute. We started off our greenhouse gas indicator exercise with emissions with global greenhouse gas emissions as the CO2 equivalent. And CO2 equivalent accounts for methane and nitrous oxide as well as carbon dioxide. And we found that the CO2 equivalent is accelerating, tracking the worst case scenario. Here is how we put this together. We used the trends in global CO2 and total greenhouse gas emissions, the 2020 report from the Netherlands Environmental Agency. And we use this paper to check the RCP 8.5 worst case emissions. And the result is that it's actually tracking above the worst case scenario. Next, atmospheric greenhouse gas concentrations, and again the CO2 equivalent, uh, that's accelerating and tracking the worst case scenario. For that, we took the atmospheric CO2 equivalent from NOAA's annual greenhouse gas index, and the last one was 504 parts per million of CO2 equivalent. And to get the RCP 8.5 worst case, we used the EPA and checked them together here, showing that atmospheric CO2 equivalent is clearly accelerating, it's soaring, and is tracking the very highest worst case RCP 8.5 scenario. Next we have radiative heat forcing and our result on that was a rapid sustained increase and tracking the worst case scenario. We obtained the radiative forcing again from the NOAA annual greenhouse gas index at 3.18 wilms per square meter 
For the RCP 8.5 radiator forcing, we used the Van Vuren paper, and this was the original reference paper for the IPCC's last assessment in 2014, and it's tracking the worst case RCP 8.5 scenario. So next we come to the global average surface temperature increase, or global warming. That is accelerating and tracking the worst case scenario we found. We use the WMO last state of the climate for the most recent annual global warming of 1.2 degrees C of 2020. For the worst case RCP 8.5 global warming, we use the IPCC's 2014 fifth assessment and then we compared the two and found the global warming is tracking the worst case scenario and it's definitely accelerating. This is the global warming index which is very very useful. It isolates the global warming from human industrial age emissions only and on the 15th of December that was 1.21 degrees C and that clearly accelerating and accelerating over the recent uh, decade. Note how this also shows the cumulative atmospheric CO2 emissions, this line in green. Next we come to the oceans. Uh, the oceans being 99% of the biosphere's living space. That's by far the largest component of the climate system and the ultimate determinant of the climate. This paper, published in October 2020, is entitled Acceleration of Ocean Warming, Salinification, Deoxygenation, and Acidification in the Surface Subtropical North Atlantic Ocean. That's the waters around Bermuda, and I've added a map in there to show the location of the island of Bermuda. First, with the oceans, we did the ocean heat content they've taken up just over 90 percent of the greenhouse gas heat added by emissions. The ocean heat content is the major cause of ocean deoxygenation. We found that ocean heat is accelerating and tracking the worst case scenario. In here I've added the most recent NOAA record of ocean heat which is clearly accelerating there is one paper that shows that uh, ocean heat is tracking the worst case scenario. It's a 2020 paper and the title is Recent Hemispheric Asymmetry in Global Ocean Warming Induced by Climate Change and Internal Variability. Very interesting paper it is because it shows by far the most ocean heat has been taken up by the southern hemisphere and relatively a uh, very small percentage from the northern hemisphere. Research was on the ocean heat content down to 2,000 meters. The important part of the paper for us was in the supplement. There's the uh, original of the supplement and here we've just taken the global observed recorded heat content to compare with their RCP 8.5 ocean heat and you can see that the global heat content is almost up with the worst case RCP 8.5. Next, marine heat waves, a relatively um, new phenomenon, I gather. They're accelerating and tracking the worst case scenario we found. And here is a paper, a marine heat waves have increased 54% from 1925 to 2016 longer and more frequent marine heat waves. Here we were able to use the IPCC's special report 2019 on the oceans and the cryosphere. For the rest of the indicators we've used this report quite a lot. This is on marine heat waves and this is a multiplication factor going up and there is the observed uh, recorded marine heat waves obviously accelerating and a big jump recently tracking the worst case scenario. Now because this is a multiplication factor and clearly it's headed in the direction of the worst case scenario in view of the fact that it's clearly accelerating. Ocean acidification, that's accelerating and tracking the worst case scenario. Ocean acidification is measured by a metric called pH which is hydrogen ion concentration. The relationship between pH and acidification is inverse. As pH goes down, 
acidification goes up. We have three sources for ocean acidification. This one is from the Australia Bureau of Meteorology, the state of the climate in 2020, and this is a nice clear image. The original one here on the left shows pH from 1880 to 2020, and as you see, there is an accelerating decline with a great speed up in the rate of decline following 1960. Here on the right, I've just inverted that record to show you the relative acidification. So this shows that the ocean acidification is accelerating rapidly with this big increase in the rate from 1960. There is a scientific report published which is titled Acceleration of Ocean Acidification in the Northwestern Pacific. And this is from the Japan Meteorological Research Institute, which is a very good source for ocean acidification. This is the data illustration from that report, and we are interested in this one, which is the pH. Focusing in on that pH data set, it starts at 1990 and goes to 2019, and this is the rate of pH decline, so it's really declining very fast. I've inverted this to show the rate of acidity. This is a list of data sets from that Japan Meteorological Agency, and this shows the actual pH up to 2020. They show that the pH by 2020 was 8.05 and even less. This is the record that most people will probably be aware of. This is from the NOAA and this is their latest update of Pacific Ocean pH. Again, the pH is 8.05 by 2020. This is the pH here declining. This is the ocean CO2 increasing and this red is the atmospheric CO2 increasing at an accelerating rate. So and I've added the median line here in blue and you can see the ocean pH is 8.05 or possibly a little less. This is the IPCC record that we have from the fifth assessment in 2014 which we're using for the RCP 8.5 worst case scenario, pH decreasing, and the red here is the worst case, and the blue is the best case. We have put in the actual 2020 pH of 8.05, and then compared the two to show that ocean acidification is not only accelerating, it's tracking the worst case scenario. That's accelerating and tracking the worst case scenario. There is a 2019 paper published entitled Acceleration of Ocean Acidification in the Western North Pacific. We use two sources for the uh, ocean pH. Uh, this is from the NOAA, the waters of Hawaii, and there is the ocean acidification in blue. The pH is 8.05, and then we took the uh, Japan and then we took the Japan Meteorological Agency, the 2020 pH at 8.05 or less. So the 8.05 was the number we applied and compared with the RCP 8.5 worst case scenario, which we got from the IPCC's fifth assessment. And uh, comparing the two, we found that uh, acidification is tracking the worst case scenario. Ocean deoxygenation. Uh, we found that accelerating and tracking the worst case scenario. Now, first, we had the IPCC's fifth assessment again. There's the historical observed record up to 2012 for that assessment accelerating. And then with both the best case and the worst case scenario, the acceleration continues. For the deoxygenation uh, data, the number, we used the recent IPCC's 2019 Special Report on Oceans and Cryosphere. There is the IPCC record of that, and we uh, cut it back to focus on the present day. And clearly, there you can see that the deoxygenation is tracking worse than the worst case scenario. Sea level rise, uh, that's accelerating and tracking the worst case scenario. 
The fact that global sea level rise is accelerating was confirmed just this year by an article from NOAA, January the 25th, 2021. And clearly you can see that it's accelerating, and there's the quote, the rate of sea level rise is accelerating. We used the latest measurement from NASA, which is up to January 2021. And for the worst case RCP 8.5 scenario, we use the IPCC 2014 fifth assessment again. There we've cut them down to the present day and compared the two, and the accelerating sea level rise is tracking the worst case scenario. And next, we come to the Arctic. And there is the accelerating Arctic temperature increase, and that's accelerating faster than the global surf than the global surface temperature increase because of Arctic amplification. The feedback from the declining extent of Arctic Ocean sea ice, and you can see that uh, around 2000, that amplification really kicks in and the uh, Arctic temperature increase uh, gets higher and higher compared to the global temperature increase. This is from NOAA, from their Arctic uh, report card of 2020. And a recent report from AMAP, the Arctic Monitoring Assessment Program, found that the Arctic temperature increase is now triple the global average. It has been double the global average, and that has increased. Uh, for the worst case scenario, we used a paper of 2020 entitled Past Perspectives of the Present Era of Abrupt Arctic Climate Change. So the finding, uh, f the main finding from this paper was that Arctic heating is abrupt. The paper was a study of Arctic decadal temperature increase. Here is the trend from 1979 to 2018. And here's the Arctic and the Arctic Ocean being in the middle there. And this is their record for RCP 8.5, the decadal trend. It certainly looks like the Arctic temperature increase is tracking the worst case scenario. Following that, we looked at Arctic sea ice. So here's the Arctic summer sea ice extent. It's been declining at an accelerating rate. So far, the uh, projected scenarios have not diverged. For this, we use that 2019 IPCC special report on the oceans and the cryosphere. Uh, there's the uh, there's the original, and there's the worst case scenario uh, again in maroon and the best case in blue. In uh, light purple, there uh, is the observed recorded sea ice extent. We cut it back here and made some changes in the sh shading to show that it's accelerating. If it follows this accelerating trend, it will certainly be on the worst case scenario. Uh, next is the ice sheet melting, accelerating and tracking the worst case scenario. Uh, this paper was a paper on both of the ice sheets and uh, the title of the paper, Ice Sheet Losses Track High-End Sea Level Rise Projections, and that's in 2020 again. The mass loss of the ice sheet is expressed in terms of sea level rise. This is from the 2019 IPCC special report. The Greenland ice sheet mass loss, we've uh, cut it back there to the present day and emphasized from the original image. There's the historical Greenland ice sheet loss, and this is accelerating, and this is tracking above the two scenarios, the best case and the worst case, so it's tracking the worst case scenario. And finally, the Antarctic ice sheet, and its mass loss is tracking the worst case scenario. This is from the same 2019 special IPCC report. We cut that down here to emphasize the historical recorded, and it's pretty similar to the Greenland ice sheet. It's just above both of the scenarios there. It's accelerating, and that means that it's certainly tracking uh, towards the worst case scenario. In conclusion, the record high accelerating worst case scenario climate change indicator trend, if allowed to continue, 
and that's the point with regards to the government's current policy of uh, pushing fossil fuel energy to the max. If this continues, it will lead to failing carbon sinks, which has already started, multiple amplifying feedbacks, which are already operant, oceans collapse due to the combination of the ocean heating, ocean acidification, and ocean deoxygenation. And all of these together, if allowed to continue, can only end in collapse of the life-supporting biosphere. And uh, so we really, really all need to be uh, getting in touch with all of our governments and uh, demanding that our governments stop pushing fossil fuels because they're pushing humanity and most life on Earth off the cliff to uh, global climate change oblivion.